de son histoire. Hello and welcome to the Alumni Lounge, the first ever Montreal Canadiens alumni podcast. I'm Chantal Desjardins, just here in the lounge, warming up by the fire. Joined by my friend, former Montreal Canadian Patrice Brisbois. The Alumni Lounge brought to you by Scotia Advice Plus. A simple conversation today can help you reach your goals tomorrow, only from Scotiabank. Now, in just a few minutes, we'll catch up with former Montreal Canadian superstar Alex Kovalev, and we'll find out what he's up to, get his take on his time with Montreal. But first, let's chat about what's going on with you. What's new? What's shaking? Nothing much, Giovannis, with you, uh, you know, with that pandemic, uh, the curfew at eight, uh, eight o'clock at night. So nothing much to do, but I keep myself busy uh, working out a few business on the side. So, uh, but uh, I'm really, really anxious, you know, our life is going to come back, uh, uh, you know, their, their no, normal way. Yeah, new normal at least. Um, yeah. Do you still watch? Do you still watch every game? Are you a super fan? Do you sit there yelling at your TV? Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> no, I'm. I don't want to say I'm a super fan, but I still love the game. I still love watching the game. I still love watching the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, uh, you know what? The start they had this year that was that was so exciting. You know, you know everybody was like, "Yeah, we're a good team," and you know, we, we can make we're gonna make the playoff. Maybe you know, dreaming about the Stanley Cup. But you know what? In hockey, it's a long season. We're gonna have your, you know, your up, your down, and uh, you know, they just passed a, a little a little down. But uh, I'm sure you know what they're gonna come back, and uh, hopefully they're gonna make the playoff because uh, we love hockey. And uh, I think I, I I really think Chantal they they can they can make make the playoff because they had a good team and uh, you know what yes I'm watching the game and sometimes I'm like why he did that why he didn't do that why I'm you know I'm a hockey player so I have to do that <laughs> yeah um a, a few fun rivalries with the North Division which uh, which Canadian teams did you enjoy playing against. Well, Toronto, Toronto, uh, Toronto, Montreal, Saturday night uh, in Montreal, in, in Toronto was, that was something, something amazing. You know, you, you know, the whole country is watching you and uh, that was a big, big, big uh, rivalry. And, and, you know, you enjoyed as a player, those, those, those games. And uh, that was a lot of pressure, but, you know, a lot, the atmosphere, the intensity, uh, that was uh, that's something special, you know. You have to you have to be a player to live, you know that that rivalry and that was that was that was something I always 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 remember. And overall, what was your favorite city to play in, and why? You know what? That's a good question because you know, always uh, as a player, you know, I like to play there. You know the the old. Six original team, you know, the Boston Garden, the, the Chicago Stadium, you know, the, that was that was special to play. But for me, that was in Pittsburgh in the Igloo against Mario Lemieux. I always, always had good games. I don't know why, but I don't know. It's because of Mario was there, but, and, uh, you know, they had a good team. So that was, you know, a big, big, big challenge every night. You know, you have to stop Mario Lemieux if you want to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good on all, all those players. And uh, but you know you know, as a defenseman, you you, you have to stop Mario Lemieux, but you have to bring some offense too. You know sometimes those guys they they cheating. You know they you know Mario was was not the guy bat checking all, all the time stuff like that. So every time I was playing against Mario, you know we get the puck. I was jumping in the play because I know Mario was not bat checking. You know kind of like stuff like that. So I'm always always enjoying it playing uh, in Pittsburgh and at the Igloo. That was a nice rink. Most people think about the mistakes they made that night. Is that, was that something that happened to you or could you shut it off or did you have a technique to? No, Chantal, that's a good question. I was a kind of player. I was, you know, thinking of, about hockey all the time. I always tried to prove, uh, improve myself. And, you know, even on the good side and the, the, the bad side, you know, when I, I was doing great play, I was, you know, like, wow, I, I made that great play. I was, you know, an, an awesome goal or something like that. And even I was, you know, making mistakes. I'm like, what I should do, you know, else to 
maybe I can do things different. So the next day, I went to the, the Bell Center and, and tried to do video as much, you know, the positioning and what, what my other option, you know, always, always try to get better and better and better. You know, after 18 years, that was the same, 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 same thing because you can always, always improve. And it, it's, you know, it, it's the passion for your game because I was a privilege to play in the NHL. And when you're there, you give everything. So that's what I try, I try to do. Now, last week we learned you were a TikToker, uh, one who TikToks. <laughs> so we are back for more. Tell me one thing that fans don't know about you. Ooh, okay. Um, if ever hockey didn't work, I want to do a fireman. You want it to be a fireman? If I want, yeah, I want to okay. do a fireman because I, uh, it's a teamwork is, you know what, you save people. Uh, you know, I have a lot of friends there. They are firemen and they, they love their job. They, uh, you know, the, the schedule, the, the camaraderie, that's, yeah. you know, the friendship. And uh, yeah, that's what I want to do. But, you know, yeah. I think I, I choose right. I was going to say, I think it worked out. Now you can go as a fireman for Halloween sometime and it all, uh, it, it all evens out. With the, cal with the calendar? Yeah, exactly. You could be the, you could be Mr. January anytime. Uh, Patrice, always fun learning new things about you. If fans have any questions, send them my way for next time. And now it's time to introduce our next guest. Introducing Advice Plus, a new way to create a plan together that keeps you heading in the right direction. We start by getting to know you better. Then we'll work together to build a plan that grows with you, adding personalized products and solutions along the way that can help you reach your goals tomorrow. We get to know you better to guide you better. Today and tomorrow, Advice Plus, only from Scotiabank. Now it's time to introduce uh, the man known as L'Artiste, Covey, AK27, or as we'll introduce him here today, Alex Kovalev. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the Alumni Lounge. Yeah, nice to be with you guys. Uh, did you have a favorite nickname? I don't know. I uh, when I played in Pittsburgh, it was uh, it was funny though. Uh, they uh, they left up to uh, fans to pick the nickname for me. So uh, I heard a lot of different uh, uh, names and nicknames and uh, sombreros because I was scoring goals or. <laughs> uh, in, uh, Super Luigi because we already had Mario there so uh, uh, I don't know it was kind of different names and uh, Commander I think there was uh, in, while I was in Pittsburgh uh, it kind of stood with me because the uh, trainer uh, gave me that knee name, nickname and I uh, used to put that on, uh, on my sticks and then when I got to Montreal uh, that's where they called me the artist I think artist you know sounds pretty nice it does sound good Breezer, yeah. of course. You like? Did you like being called Breezer? Is that a good one? It's not as good. Yeah, as Yeah, but my my first <laughs> nickname was SS. Ooh. You know Why? for what? For what? superstar. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, I don't want that nickname. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> you, I swear. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know what, Breeze was the Breeze. I was a good skater, so that's why the the, the nickname Breezer uh, came out. Yeah. I like it. I'm always jealous of people with nicknames. Chantel doesn't really shorten anything good, you know? <laughs> uh, so Alex, where are you right now? I'm in Moscow. We, uh, we finished the season. Uh, last game we had on uh, February 27th. Um, we uh, didn't make playoffs. It was a really struggle season for us um, with everything that's happening. Um, but I mean, we uh, we still have some positive positive uh, things we've done uh, with the team. So, uh, but right now, season is over, and uh, probably in a few days, uh, be back home. Now, you joined the KHL's Kunlun Red Star as an assistant coach in 2018. You joined as head coach in July 2020. How much, how challenging was it for a superstar like yourself to then switch to having to coach guys on the ice? Well, I never really take it that way. Uh, you know. Who I am, who what I've done in the past. Uh, I mean, you take in uh, as a guy that have a lot of knowledge uh, in hockey, and you're trying to pass to the new generation. Um, like I said, it just depends how you present yourself. If you present yourself as a as a coach that who, who wants to be the coach, or the person that actually still live hockey and you still feel like you are the you the player, and you insert yourself uh, with the players. Um, 
be part of their group and trying to find a you know right communication with the with the players so they can actually feel comfortable being around you um and that's um pretty much uh, what i did i mean i went through 70 players this year starting with the two lists in the beginning because uh, Amer north americans could not cross the border so i had to start with the pretty much uh, vhl players uh, from russia and uh, in of course uh, we lost first uh, 13 games uh, and I mean, we, we lost like the first two months and it was hard to recover down the road when uh, North Americans start coming in. Um, but that's, you know, that's life and uh, what we live, the life we live in right now. And um, it's, it was challenging, but at the same time, uh, being the head coach the first time and have this kind of experience, you know, it teaches you a lot of things. And of course, uh, when you start facing, uh, you know, much easier things and, you know, it's going to be much easier to, you know, whatever it's a coaching or making decisions on players or uh, pick up players, whatever it is involves uh, being a head coach and you know, it probably uh, be much easier to make decisions. The, the, the new generation, that uh, approach that we have to change is we have to find what they're good at and play around the skills. So there's nothing, you know, really low percentage players that you actually gonna do it like you said yourself that okay you know do it this way because this is how it's supposed to be done because they it just the uh, like for what i saw it's pretty much impossible you just have to find a solution what he's got you know what he's capable of and just maybe make make a couple tweaks right. and 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 you know that's the only way play around his skills okay was coaching something that was always in the plans not really, actually. Uh, you know, I when I retire, I I said to myself, you know what, like I don't really want anything to do with hockey. I just want to get away completely. And uh, I actually started taking uh, acting classes. I've been part of the Gubu Junior uh, movie uh, when I played bodyguard um, for Mafia Guy, and then a couple, uh, as you saw, um, the Pichar TV shows uh, in Montreal. Um, and, uh, you know, something that really interests me, but uh, this business just gone. So uh, it, to develop this, it just uh, it's a long process be, before you really become uh, uh, busy and uh, get picked up by, you know, uh, by other movies, will you say it, or like commercials or whatever it is. So it's kind of a long way to, for this process to develop. Uh, so I decided, you know, why I wasted time? Uh, and uh, plus I've been... I've been home for a while now and I like feels like I, I'm missing something. I need to do something. And, and I decide, uh, you know, ask a couple of people around and I see what's available. And I got the uh, uh, invitation to uh, this Chinese team that had been created to uh, play in KHL. Did you do any like comedic roles or like, are you telling jokes? Um, well, I mean, it was a pretty funny movie. Uh, I mean, TV show, I don't know if you saw the Bashar. Um, it was a part of the first, uh, epi I mean, uh, first season, I think in the third season, it was actually pretty funny because you, you playing with the, with the, uh, uh, actors that are actually comedian and it was really hard to start, uh, to, uh, actually acting because it just make you laugh, you know, the faces they make, the things they say, and, um, you know, it was just, a. Uh, but um, I, I don't know. I always, uh, I always been a fan of movies, watching the movies on TV. And I somehow I always, while I'm watching the movie, I always uh, kind of play myself in uh, in in that role and see like what I able to do that, what I able to say those things they saying or act the way they acting. And I don't know. And I decide to try it. And I think like I feel pretty comfortable in front in front of the camera. I don't really have any problems and. And, uh, and I, I thought it's like, I think it's a fun thing to do because you pretty much just act and whatever you want to be, you know, be a weird guy, be a scary guy or whatever it is. And it just kind of, it's, it's fun to try. And, and I started taking uh, classes, uh, acting classes in New York, uh, did some, uh, um, you know, like a small clips uh, for directors, you know, when they go on the website and watch you acting, you know, body acting or language acting. But it's, 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 it's a great story. Wow. I like I like when a player, you know, at, at, when you retire, doing something else, you know, something new, something challenging, something. And you know what? You know, Alex, I love cars, so I'm, I want to be a race car yeah. driver. And thanks again for taking us at uh, that time. You know, it was yeah, a lot of fun. I'm it's still a pleasure. Yeah, because uh, the story is Chantal. We uh, we had a few days before the season start. Uh, I think the last year where we played together. 
And though, um, you know, I, I know a lot of friends uh, in Tremblant, so I know the, uh, the, the general manager at the, the, the piss, the, the, the racetrack in Mont Tremblant. So I invite the guys uh, uh, to do a few laps uh, with uh, Porsches and Ferraris and stuff like that. And to be honest with you guys, Alex was the best, best driver right away. He, uh, uh, he understand, you know, the, the speed, the braking, the apex. It's all, you know, what you need when you are, uh, you are doing, uh, you know, racing. And I think why I know why, because you're a pilot. So it's all, it's all physique. It's all, uh, and right. Alex did really, really good. Even in his spin the car in corner one, he didn't touch <laughs> anything. That's very good. Very impressive, Alex. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know, he you de remember he definitely, the Porsche? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it definitely, definitely the knowledge from flying uh, helps, but, uh, don't forget, I, I grew up in my you know, hometown with a lot of being made, and my father worked at the factory 25 years. So I've been surrounding cars the entire my life. So, are you uh, still are you still driving uh, minis? <laughs> no, I saw I sold. Actually, it took me a while to sell that car, but no, I uh, went to Teslas. Okay, good. Oh, fancy the one with the with the things that open yeah. up like this, like a spaceship. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah, oh. Those cars are fun. Yeah. And, and flying too, like we talked, you know, Patrice and I spoke about, you know, how important it is to have other hobbies. You have a number of hobbies. Talk about flying. Listen, we, we, we only live uh, once. So we got to try a lot of different things in our life. You got to enjoy life. You can't just, uh, you know, if you're a hockey player and stick rest of life and be a hockey player coach and everything else, uh, but uh, everything involves hockey, but you know, you, you got to really try everything, you know, as long as you actually feel for it. Yeah. Because you don't want to just, oh, you know, I want to go flying because I'm not sure if I can or whatever. I mean, I I said and learning, you know, same time the uh, the prece I mean, uh, all the rules and and technologies and you know, just to learn to how to fly the plane uh, while I'm learning the language same time. So uh, I mean, I said the in front of the books for five six hours because this is something that I really, you know, want to learn. You know, you don't want to force yourself into something that you don't want to do. But just because, you know, like I said, we live once and we want to try a lot of things. Oh, that's fun. That opens up so many more um, opportunities, you know, just to sure. be able to exactly. go out there and do things as opposed to just staying home. Love the perspective. Introducing Advice Plus, a new way to create a plan together that keeps you heading in the right direction. We start by getting to know you better. Then we'll work together to build a plan that grows with you, adding personalized products and solutions along the way that can help you reach your goals tomorrow. We get to know you better to guide you better. Today and tomorrow, Advice Plus, only from Scotiabank. Let's take a stroll down memory lane. When you first came to Montreal before the 2004 trade deadline, do you remember what you felt when you first got the news? Oh, you know, tell, tell the truth, uh, um, you know, I've been honest uh, that, you know, when I came to Rangers, I, that's a one thing came to my mind because we were traveling common play in Canada and Montreal and Ottawa or Quebec or whatever. And first came to my mind, like I would never want to play in Canada. You know, it's, it's like cold and it's just, I don't know, they're speaking different language and it was like, it's just not for me. But of course, you know, you're a young kid and the first city comes to your mind and whatever city, the first city that you go to and you just like feel, okay, I, I hope this is my home until the arrest. Like, I don't want to go anyplace else. Um, and then, uh, um, you know, when careers get, went on and I, uh, you know, I just fall in love uh, every time I go to Canada, you realize, you know, how much people love hockey, how much people leave hockey and so much history you're learning you know what's going on in montreal like you know the history in montreal you know quebec or winnipeg or whatever the city you go to canadian city um there's some city always uh, have some kind of history and when i got traded in montreal i was like first kind of wasn't wasn't sure what to expect what's going to happen to me like you know how that transition how well the transition is going to go um i knew i can do good i know i can show myself i know i can you know how good i was um, and people going to love my style and everything. But same time, just that transition, uh, uh, as Patricia will understand me, um, you know, have a new players, you know, a new staff that you have to learn, you know, um, kind of lifestyle, like everything is going to be new. You know, one thing you're spending five years in one place and all of a sudden just everything just breaks and you have to start pretty much over again in a new team. 
So for when us, I got to Mon- yeah, right? you know what, Alex? For us, for as as a player, we were so happy to <laughs> to get you <laughs> because I have nothing against Joseph Belli, but Joseph Belli was a young a young kid, talent talented player, hockey player, but. I was not you, you know, you, you won the Stanley Cup. You, you, you already proved you're one of the best players in the NHL. And to get a player like you and our team, you know, that, that boost, that boost, that, that energy. And you say that maybe the guy, you know, that's going to bring experience, talent. And you know what? You, you, the only thing we want you know, as a player, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's win the hockey games and the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Well, thanks for saying that. But, uh, you know, my my perspective saying, uh, you know, these things was not because, you know, what I already achieved. Um, You know, it's always been happening in my career when every time, um, you know, of course, I didn't expect because that was my first trade and and uh, I didn't expect uh, what's going to happen. But down the road, I always end up in the teams where people never really, even when I proved myself, but people never understood how good I was and just let me play hockey. Let me, don't change my style. Don't, you know, trying to change, uh, you know, for different things, you know, make me to do different things. I, I already show, I got to, you know, I proved myself. And, and it's one of those reasons because I, before I came to NHL, I experienced those things. In, in Russia, and that's what I was afraid of. And that's why I said, that, you know, these things when when I got traded in Montreal, like, like I didn't know how that transition, how well it's going to go, how, you know, if the coach will understand my style. I know he knows how good I am. I, you know, he knows that I can help the team. But that transition, and, and of course, you know, it's ended up that way. And, and then, you know, in the beginning, we, we you know, we couldn't really uh, understand each other. I don't know, maybe trying to see some different things from me. Um, but, uh, you know, as an honest person, I always, you know, I try to understand the coach, even when I am on the bench, you know, during the game, I, I want to see why, you know, uh, whatever action coach does, I want to understand them. Like, why is he doing them? Like, you know, why now, why, whatever. So when I wasn't playing as good or whatever, so I, I, I go to the coach and I, I need to hear from him, you know, maybe I hear something that will help my game. Maybe I'm going to hear something um, that maybe I'm not doing right. You know, maybe I should, something that he sees, um, you know, maybe it will change my game. Because remember, when I first came, I, I, I didn't do that well. I think I had like 11 games and maybe three points in 11 games. Yeah. I was completely lost. I was like, I didn't, I didn't know um, like what happened, like where, you know, where to start when, you know, I was completely confused. And then when playoffs started it and, uh, you know, we lost uh, that, uh, I think, first game to Boston. And, you know, I had a chance to speak to Julian and I, uh, you know, we had a good conversation in, in, his, in his room and, and everything just went uh, completely. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's why, you know, sometimes, yeah, I, I mean, we all understand the coaches, it's not their job constantly come to us and help and us. They got, you know, 26, 25 players to deal with and, and it's not easy. And now I understand how hard it is being a coach, but uh, you know, it's it's still. I think I always say uh, this thing to, um, or even kept in my mind because if you the coach and you have talented players, those are talented players. You know, they of course you don't want to separate them from the other group, but I think the important puzzle of your group, and you have to make sure they feel comfortable. Of course, they don't want to put him in a situation like, oh, you know, it's all about him. You know, but you have to put him in a situation so make sure. I mean, we, we all, you know, humans, we all, okay, we achieve something, we're good players, but, you know, we, we have uh, our ups and downs and we make mistakes and bad games, good games. And we also need the help sometimes, you know, even you're good players and you achieve a lot, but sometimes we don't see what's happening to us and some, you know, games just go upside down and you just keep trying to look for us like, okay, where to start, you know, what should I do? And then that small conversation with the coach, you know, because one thing, I mean, you only need five minutes of it and everything just can change. And that's when we had that conversation. Uh, at first, at first it was a little weird the way it started it, but it was, it was funny. It was, it was honest and it was a good conversation. And that's why, you know, everything just flips after that. Montreal loves its superstars. You were the superstar, uh, favorite memories of Montreal. I mean, you, you can't really s- separate or pick one. I think every moment that you lived in Montreal was one of the best moments. Um, you know, start from 
I think uh, uh, from the time I came and and then Koivu came back, and I think uh, there was a sold out uh, as many seasons I played there. And um, being outside, you know, the respect from uh, fans and uh, everywhere you go to, you know, always respecting you. It's far, it doesn't matter you know, if you playing well, you're not playing well. They always supporting. They always on, on your side. They always say to you, come come up to you and say, you know, don't worry about it. you'll you'll get better. You know, you'll start scoring goals. You you know, you guys are gonna start winning. Don't worry about. It. I mean, those kind of things you don't really expect. Uh, people just keep following that history. They China. You know, even the the Montreal wants so many Stanley Cups, but they want more. They feel that uh, they this is a time that a group of new group of uh, uh, players coming in. I think they will going to be new heroes. It's going to be in in town. It's going to be uh, new excitement in town, and and that's what we were trying to to do to bring that excitement to to bring even something more that people experienced in the past. And of course, you know we. We've done some of it, but uh, you know, of course, it would have been uh, the big deal for all of us uh, when I played there is to win the Stanley Cup. Um, but uh, you know, I was a little disappointed that we couldn't achieve that. But still, you know, I had a lot of memories, good memories. Every every moment that I uh, spent in Montreal, that was a uh, you know tough times, good times. But for me, they all great times. My favorite moment of you, but you have so many. You know what? When you lost your helmet. In the playoff <laughs> against Boston, because I was on the ice, and you know I passed the puck and you scored, so that's what I remember. Yeah, you <laughs> shot, you shot the puck. I have to catch exactly. it. Exactly, <laughs> but you know that shift. I thought it was Gilafer was back on the ice. <laughs> that was, well, that was, that was sick. I was like, wow, that was your best. You know what, Alex? That was your best hockey you were playing in your career. Yeah. No, I mean the, that that team we had, it was just. I mean every every season the team we had, it just it was amazing. I, I had, like I said, um, from that moment, from you know uh, the the playoff when I talked to Julian and and coming to next season, like I I already knew, you know, it'd be so good. Like we just coming into something really exciting, yeah. you know, something's going to be really cool to be part of, and that's that's what it was. So, you know, definitely would have been, you know, great to win the Stanley Cup. I think that. Is, I mean, that city would go crazy if you won the Stanley Cup. You know what, Alex? You, you lost uh, on that sequence. You lost your helmet. You know what? You never, never think in your head like, oh, I have to go uh, back to the bench. Because now, yeah. I, I know now it's a new rule. Why you, you think the helmet, that here? They're going right away to the bench. But you know what? You never stop. Like, you know what? I want that puck. I want to score. I want. Exactly. That's why I love about you. That was Thanks. passion. That was, you want to, you try to make a difference. And you know what? You put that pressure on. I, I know you are putting a lot, lot of pressure on your shoulder because you want to make a difference every night. And you know what? I know it's not easy in Montreal. You know, when you're the best player in that team, people say, hey, you, you're supposed to make us win. Yeah. And uh, but you never, never deny that. And I know you, and I know you give now. You now everything. you know me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, Alex, I, because I was no, you, no, Patrice, you're wrong. The only the only reason I lost my helmet because of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> was there any I part of show you? my cool hair? Your cool hair, <laughs> it yeah. It was very cool hair. That was the most amazing goal. Was there any part of you that was like, I should go back and get another helmet? No, but I, you know, when you when you in the battle, plus you know, every time we uh, play against Boston, Charo is always on top of me. He always play, you know, they put him against me one on one. So, and it was it was always constantly battle, battle, battle. And he always, you know, album me, always do a lot of crazy things. And that that moment, you know, when we score a goal, uh, you know, before that, if you see the sequence that he again hit me with the elbow, that's the reason I lost the helmet. But, you know, when adrenaline kicks in in that moment, when he got hit, he's like, you just first thing, you know, comes to my mind. I was like, you know what? You do this to me, like, watch me. So Montreal, such an intense city to play in when you're a star. So many passionate fans, we'll say passionate. What techniques did you use to handle the pressure? Did you avoid reading the news or did you, did you start meditating? Did you drink straight vodka? Like, what was your trick? <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> you know, my 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 life is my life has always been challenges and uh, pressure and everything else. And I guess I trained myself. I mean, look at this way. I left my you know I left home. I was 14 years old. That's already a challenge. That's already a lot of pressure. Be it by yourself. I mean, just think about you sending your son, 14 years old, thousand uh, thousand kilometers outside the home, and he's by himself. You know, like how, how would you feel? I don't think you're gonna able to uh, you know make him to leave leave the house and that time I, I said to my parents if my mom was crying my mom wouldn't like said you know what are you going like what are you doing blah, blah, blah. so she was constantly crying but my dad you know he you can see he he was a little bit nervous he was afraid to, to you know for me um, but when we got together to Moscow he he knew how um, you know, what kind of individual I, I was. And uh, I was already independent. He saw that I am confident, you know, I made this decision. Um, this is this is what I want to do. This is my future. And, and you know, there's no stopping, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to say to me next or whatever you're going to do, just not going to work. And he saw that and he saw that confident look in my face. And, uh, and it was, it was one of the uh, probably best decisions I ever made in my life because you know that changes everything and would you suggest it to other other people going away well I mean you have you have to you have to see if your uh, son or um, daughter really into it because it has to come from kids you know has to come from child himself you know it can't come oh you know do you want do you want to go like you got invited to this city do you want to go there like they're interested in you of course, you know, the son, yeah, yeah, you know, I can go. But I mean, you can tell right away if, if, if it's, uh, the, the child is into it or not. Um, is because um, child, you know, sometimes say these things because he or she um, feels like, okay, this is my future. But they're not thinking about what to expect, you know, where are you going to leave? Who are you going to live with? Um, uh, how are you gonna take care of yourself? Like you don't, you don't think those things because the first thing come to your mind is like, oh, you know, I'm I'm gonna play for this team, or I'm gonna, you know, do the work with these coaches or whatever. They don't think any other things that the outside sports. And when they start facing that, what I faced, and you know, you, I mean, I had moments uh, where I said, you know, I mean, I can't take this anymore. I want to go home. Like you know, I, this is this is too much for me. I can't handle it. You know, I was, times I, I would probably cry because, like, I feel I came here and I know it's the right decision. But same time, I just emotionally couldn't get through. And and um, how I distract myself is uh, I call. First thing I did is I called my friend from you know from the team, and I said like, oh, you know, can I come you know visit you? And then when I visit him, he's like, oh, you want to stay and we'll go to the school tomorrow together. So at that moment, everything just, you know, kind of he calmed me down and, and that helped me a lot. Uh, probably wouldn't change anything if you say like, OK, you know, you got to leave. And like if I have to go back to dormitory again, where I where I leave, uh, you would, you know, go back to depression time. Um, you know, you would probably could be back to where I started. But I think that moment, because he let me stay at his apartment and we went to school together and, and kind of make me more comfortable and, you know, made a big role on, on, on my career. So uh, that's why we still are really close friends, um, you know, best friends. Uh, and, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a big, uh, big thing, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure how many, what's the percentage kids these days will at age 14 uh, leave their house. I mean, one thing, you know, you go from, uh, Montreal to Ottawa. I mean, you know, parents can always come. But one thing, the other thing, if you go a thousand kilometers away, where you know you're actually away, you know, where you can't just visit uh, your child every day. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see that, you know, happen uh, to many kids these days. Alex, who was your idol growing up and or role model? Um, even I, uh, I was born uh, that year when he died, Harlamov. Uh, okay. But I was I was able to uh, you know read the, see his videos uh, read his books um, you know and I and I know by reading uh, reading uh, uh, Gretzky's book um, that he learned from a lot from him too so he sees he saw how he played I don't know if true or not but that's what it's uh, in the book says 
Um, so you learn a lot from him, pick up a lot of uh, games from uh, from his style. And I mean, he played pretty much like, you know, Harlamov. Um, but uh, the, ma- the main thing is in my, in my life, how I design my, my game is it's never been about, you know, uh, pick an idol and I want to be exactly like him. For me, it was important to be... Um, different from everybody I, I don't want to be look the same like this guy or that guy I want to be okay I'm, I'm going to see how Patrice Brizois plays and I want to pick okay is that a skating is that a um, you know he's shooting or is that his stick handling and then let's see I can pick up you know his skating and then I maybe will change something that will yeah. help me more you know be something more different so that's how I design my game, and and I pick from different players. If I see somebody like, oh, you know, it's a cool shot he does during the practice, and I was like, okay, let me try to do this, and and then you you do it. It's like, oh, maybe I will change it, twist it a little bit, and that make it even more precise, or is that going to be more cooler or whatever? So same thing with stick handling. So pretty much I develop all my game around by watching other players and and study them. Um, you know, design design my own skating by working with the. You know, I was lucky enough. Uh, I had uh, um, kids that I went to school with, and uh, some of them were figure skaters, some of those speed skaters. So I asked them, "Can I come to your practice?" So not the point. I never told. It was funny though. Like in my age, and I even I was I was thinking those things even back then. But you know, they thought that I come to practice. Just they they want maybe pick up uh, speed skating or figure skating but i only went there just because you want to learn tricks you know like the technique ability. technique yeah, yeah. So figure skating and you know, i pick up you know a few things and oh. it was uh, changing them my, myself when i had a chance to go and skate outside and trying to repeat it what they what they did in practice and and that's why uh, i was able to design my skating so in a short distance i can man- you know maneuver as fast as I can maneuver and not losing the speed. Speed skating, uh, I did the exact same thing. You know, went work with the coach, and uh, it was it was for me important to design that posture so you avoid uh, any groins or back problems. And that's what I pick up. Uh, you know, good push. Uh, you know, body transfer, weight transfer, one leg to another to get uh, full extension uh, from upper body to to your leg instead of just kind of stay keep your body in the middle and just push with your legs that's where you get a lot of stress on your groins and, and the low back so you know i i learned a lot i mean i can i was uh, laughed with the, uh, one of my uh, uh, coaches um, this year when we the, when they come out the players come out on the ice in the morning skate and you know we sat on the bench and said uh, oh this guy is like you know it looks like he's got a low uh, low back issue it's like how you know i said i can tell you about any player and the doctor was sitting next to us and he's like yeah how about this guy so he tell him like what do you think about him i i never even knew like you know because coach uh, the doctor examined them they you know they um trying to help them uh, to recover whatever they know all their injuries and everything so i named every person he he asked me and i i told every problem he has you know just right by, by watching the way he skates so you know if i said even if he's not uh, having that issue but he will soon uh because you know that's that's a lot of stress so just by posture i learned posture that's really important in skating uh you know if you hockey speed skater figure skater posture is most important chantal i have to say you know what i played with alex four or five years and one-on-ones alex was the strongest guy on his leg on his skate he was the strongest to protect the puck so every practice I try to go against Alex because, you know what, I always say to myself, if I can stop Alex Kovalev in practice, I can stop anybody in the NHL. That was the way I was thinking. But I have to tell you, that was not easy. I was not easy because <laughs> it was so good. It was so strong. It was, but you know what, that's what I like. And, you know, I was, I was at the end of my, my career. So, yeah. You know what? But I always, always try to push myself. And, and you know what? I was hard to play against you. Practicing well, that's against a, that's you. The idea. That's a good thing about the good yeah. hockey players because they want to challenge themselves and they always speak the hardest always. person in practice. I know you play with Mario. Mario was, I think, it's the best player you can play. But do you have a name that, you know, I would love to play with that guy? You know, I never, never thought about... I mean, the only reason that I... I 
want to be able to play with all, you know, the three of them, you know, Mario, Gretzky, and Messi, just because he's a little kid, I used to watch him, Canada Cup and all those on TV. It'd be cool to play them on the one line. So, and I, you know, luck, it'll be lucky enough for Mario came back from retirement and I had a chance to play uh, play with him. Um, same thing with Mass uh, win the Stanley Cup with play with Gretzky on the line. I mean that was that was uh, exciting. But in in my life, I never really kind of thought of that way. Like, oh, I, I would love to play with with this guy or that guy because my my thinking always been, you know what? I have to find a way. Whatever line I'm playing on is a third line or fourth line. I'm the leader on that line, and I have to make this line as best as they can be. And that's why, you know, if they place me in the fourth line, you know, I would go to the players I'm going to be playing with and I'm going to tell them, okay, you're doing this and doing this. I'm going to do this. And and we have to do, you know, like uh, do as best as we can do. Or if you don't want to do these things, you're not, not comfortable, tell me what you want me to do. So that way you make your partners comfortable. You make them um, so they, they're not just constantly looking for you because, you know, you're a superstar or whatever. Uh, you got a name. But, you know, whatever you're playing with, you have to make them, you know, if a young guy, you know, old guy, but you have to make him comfortable to play with you. Yeah. And that's why, like, for me, always been, uh, like, I want him to think that they want to play with me, not all the way around. So, uh, you know, for me, it was important, to, you know, make every line I'm on, I make uh, that line as best I can make it. You know, when you, you were playing for the Rangers and Mike Keenan, Mike Keenan was your coach, right? Yeah. And you, do you remember your long, long, long shift, like four or five minutes? I want to know that story behind <laughs> that. You know what? What happened? Uh, <laughs> you, you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how many, how many times uh, I received this question this year. It's, it's, a, um, good, it's uh, a good story. Everybody, everybody wants to learn, I guess, to know what, what happened. Yes. You know, all I say is like, you know what? You know, you guys can laugh as much as you want, but Gretzky's got 62 records in NHL, but he doesn't have mine. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're right, Alex. <laughs> he never played. Sorry, this... How long was your shift? Uh, well, it was last five minutes, uh, end of third period. I mean, second period, and two and a half minutes in the beginning third. <laughs> and he was so, obviously uh, trying to prove a point to you, and you're well, like, I mean, okay, I'll take. I'll take your well, challenge. Well, being, being, being a young kid, you know, you always, uh, like, you never even think about it uh, because you have so much energy. You, you want to prove so much. You want to show that how good you are. And you're not thinking about, oh, you know, you got 30 seconds, I got to change. Or 40 seconds, I got to change. You don't think about it. You just, you just you know, you're playing. And when, you you know, time you feel like, you know, you're tired, you go to change. And, and Mike, you know, it happened many times. Uh, during the season when Michael is like, uh, you know, yells on me because I will play with my shifts and the guys get pissed off because I changing late and, you know, I play two shifts in a row pretty much. And at one point he decides, I guess, uh, you know, that's enough. So what I heard from, from the guys, you know, they told me this story later, what ha was, was happening on the bench. So he was telling the guys, when Kovalev go back, like, don't let him in. You know, just uh, just stand him back. <laughs> so you know, I'm coming back. Hey, I'm coming back. <laughs> so I'm no. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't. And like you were that. happy, it was, right? No, it was. It was. It was kind of uh, funny because when I go back on the bench and they they all kind of sat serious on the bench and like, no, no, go away, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. And I was like, at first, because everybody so serious, it was like a normal kind of look, like you know, no, normal game situation. Everybody just you know on the bench, whatever. So it's like, yeah, I keep playing. I was like, so I went back. I already was on the ice for about a minute and, and about 20, a minute, 20 or something like that. And I, and I came back and I was like, well, the first, came, the first thing came to my mind. I was like, well, I guess I'm playing well. He wants me double shift. So I, 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 went, I went back again. I'm like, I probably play for another minute and a half. And then and I, the guy said, you know, when next time Kobe come back, just stay by the boards and then do not let him in. So, so they all stood right like, you know, like a wall, you know, in front of the boards. So when I came back and trying to change, they just stood there and they just wouldn't let me get in. It's like, no, no, keep 
playing and then while the saying just keep playing they all i see is smile on their faces and then i realize what's happening so mike decided to give me a lesson <laughs> and then i i got pissed myself and i was like you know what screw you it's like i'm gonna show you that you know why i stay because you know i'm gonna prove my point too you know you're proving yours i prove mine so i i got so mad and zuba gave me a uh, pass uh, you know uh, on the zone entry and i just put a slapper with my eyes closed, like completely, I closed my eyes and I shot it so hard. The puck even, when they uh, went crossbar, uh, I mean, uh, under the crossbar and went out, out of the net, they almost ended up on the blue line again. You know, that's how hard I shot that part. Wow. And then I, uh, and then I uh, draw two penalties and then period was ended. And then uh, started third period. He's like, yeah, you, you go back on the bench. I mean, go back on the ice. I was like, well, I guess, All right. I guess, it's, I guess, <laughs> I guess it's going to be another I'm playing well. minute. <laughs> so Great I was like, story, you know, Alex, you. Well. Like, you know at, at that at that time we were already looking at each other. Like I can see he's mad at me. I was like, I I I, I didn't even want to look at him. Like I didn't. So we kind of mad at each other, but this time he was probably you know have a little smile inside his mind that because he left me up there, I dropped two penalties and uh, scored a goal. And then uh, third period, I, I made an assist. And then almost intercept the D to D pass in the offensive zone, and uh, it just because of being so tired uh, after two minutes, I just lost the puck right in front of the goal. It could have ended up with the second goal. So uh, you know, and then uh, you know, finally I decided, you know, like you see, I was testing, you know, what's gonna happen this time. So it was just play, we were like playing the games now against each other. So I planned for two and a half minutes, you know, that when I lost the puck in front of that, and I kind of get upset and. And actually, I wasn't even, uh, if I remember completely, I think I wasn't even thinking about um, what's going to happen. It's just kind of uh, momentum, like, you know, okay, it's it's time to change. I wasn't thinking about that. I'm actually, you know, getting a lesson now from Mike. So when I come on the bench and, and all of a sudden I just easily just walk to the bench and nobody really stopped me, I was like, oh, okay, so what happened? And like, I just play five minutes a second, two and a half minutes in the third, like now I'm just walking in. So, and then I guess, you know, they felt like it was enough of a lesson and he already proved his point. I proved my point. So we understood each other, but we had a back-to-back -back games with the Islanders the next day. And uh, I only played two and a half minutes entire game. So, <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I still, I still, I still. <laughs> I still, I still don't know if, if Mike decided to give me a rest because I play so much or he's just uh, <laughs> trying to prove another point. Um, you've been very good at uh, handling adversity, taking opportunities like a five-minute shift and then turning it into something good. Uh, in Montreal in 2009, when you were going through a rough patch and then Bob Gainey helped you get back on track or at least played a role in getting back on track, but it was by keeping you away from the rink. Do you remember what, what you were going through then? Like if you were as a competitor, was that very tough or was it something you knew you needed? Because then you bounced back like crazy. Um, well, at that time it was, it was probably, um, you know, uh, being honest at this point, uh, you know, it was my fault most of the time um, because a uh, Patrice probably would, uh, would, you know, know what I'm talking about um, because when you are a player and something start going is going on in the team and or if it's going to be not playing enough or they put you in the fourth line or whatever so the first thing come to your mind it's not about oh you know i guess i'm not playing good i'm doing something wrong the first thing come to your mind i was like this coach is idiot like what the hell he's, he doesn't know what he's doing so you know you always find this solutions and, and answers in the wrong places and what happened in the end i mean nobody's gonna you know, say anything to coach or nobody is going to say, you know, coach wrong because you're not performing. You're the guy that on the ice, you're the performer and you're not performing. And that's why, you know, you're in the fourth line. That's why you're not playing or you're playing two minutes or five minutes instead of 20. Um, so uh, in, in that time, I really got myself so, so deep into the hole by just com complaining other, about other things except myself. And and just in that in that to the, got to the point where I'm actually was like I don't know how to recover. I was I was tripping, you know, on, on like where there's nobody around. I was losing the puck. I was completely like I'm just first start start playing hockey, mm -hmm. and I knew at that time like this is just not going to be good. And and it wasn't my decision. It was I think uh, Bob's decision to do that because he see he saw what happened. As as you know, being a you know great player, he he knows 
player is what they're experiencing, and and I think he 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 thought you know this would be the the right idea for for a player to recover, and uh, you know he was he, he was right. I mean he it was thanks to him that he took that approach. You know helped me to recover and and give me some time actually to recover from blaming other people and start looking yourself more and, and see what you do good and what you do bad, analyze your game and, and, you know, put a puzzle together and start pretty much over again. And, uh, you know, we, I had a couple of days to be, Bob actually offered, uh, we went to all Montreal for a walk. We talk about a lot of things, you know, he gave me some uh, pointers about his career and, you know, what he've done and, you know, how he played, um, you know, some some of it wasn't you know really kind of use you know usable for me. Like I really, but it was interesting to hear just to to change um, everything in your head, just to hear about something different. You know, it was it was really uh, helpful. Um, you know, the most important thing is for being an athlete and and you know playing the sport we playing uh, just to release. Uh, everything on your mind release you know not not you know hold it in yourself just say exactly what happened to you just say let it go and say what's wrong instead of again it's like this coach you know not using me or this coach you know put me in the fourth line or this coach this and that so you know what, Alex, control control what you can control exactly simple as that yeah. yeah yeah so i was i was able to just release you know everything and say to him exactly what i felt and and right away it was just you know he, I didn't know what what the the response is going to be from him but uh, the response was really simple he didn't say anything he understood he gave me some pointers you know what happened to his career and that's it and uh, everything just start uh, we just started everything over again. Now you retired from the NHL uh, 2012, 2013 after 14 games with the Panthers. You always said you wanted to play till you were 50. Now looking back after this much time's gone by, how do you feel about the way uh, things ended? Well, I'm I'm really disappointed because I never had a received explanation what happened in Florida. Why they decided? Uh, you know, first of all, they they brought me there. I went through tryout and I didn't have a contract. I had to actually <clears throat> um, work for for a contract at the try uh, the tryout. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I mean, I understand. You know, they don't have to explain me, and maybe that's the way it works. That's the way the rule is, and you know, they don't have to explain me everything. But still, you know, be uh, be honest to the player. You know, player that not first time in this league. You know, at least done something career. I think you know it would have been nice to have some kind of explanation because you know, again, we you know we experienced a lot of different things in, during our careers and i'm sure we can handle it and i'm sure we're not gonna whatever it's a bad or good you know we're not gonna use that and and go and complain around and say you know if you did something wrong you know you're not gonna say oh you know he did this or that or he thinks i'm doing this i mean who cares it's it's done it's done you know we we, we all big boys we we all understand so i didn't it was for me you know that's all he needed you know i understand that maybe the trying to go for um, for new uh, the younger guys um, but they brought me there you know help Hubert there I play with him um, you know on the line and uh, we did a pretty good job um, you know but uh, nobody like I said you know they just uh, the, they even made that happen during my birthday time you know uh, the way it happened uh, uh, it was a game against Boston in the afternoon and they were right in my uh, birthday day, and uh, Dineen, uh, I was right at the door, go for the game, to the game, and uh, he received a call from Dineen, and he said, uh, "Alex, uh, you don't have to come in. Uh, we don't need your help anymore." And uh, I ended up just staying in my apartment and uh, eat eat cake, uh, entire <laughs> cake myself. So, um, what, what kind of cake was it? Um, I don't know. Chocolate. 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 <laughs> Oh, I even 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 the save, uh, save uh, I have a picture uh, uh, my computer when I when I said like this in front of like a cake and there's like a one uh, candle lighted and I just said like this in the dark and it was like looking at it that's how I spend the rest of the day oh we'll have a birthday party for you to make up for it <laughs> sounds <Yeah>. good <laughs> it's, already, it's already passed you missed it <laughs> <laughs> um 
Scotiabank is the main sponsor of the Alumni Lounge. So it's fitting we talk about money before we wrap up. When you signed your first big contract, uh, what was the first big ticket item you bought? I mean, it, when I was in Russia, you know, um, and went to, we went to Olympics and uh, I made, you know, we won the Olympics in Amberville and I made my first 9,000 francs and I spent 9,000 francs to buy my dad the first car. And, you know, that time I had some kind of idea of what I'm going to do with the money. But when I got to NHL and made a big contract, I, I never really had anything in mind. Like for me, it was important to, uh, you know, it's like when I was 14 and, and you hoping just get away from parents and you be, you know, you by yourself, you're not responsible for everything. And same thing that time when you get a big contract, you got a money, now you got to, you know, settle your life, you know, make sure you got a good house, make sure you're comfortable, make sure it's uh, um, comfortable to, to, to work and to, to get better uh, as a player. And that's pretty much what you think of. Uh, I mean, you just happy that you actually achieved what you want to achieve in your life and as get in a position where you're just comfortable just to, just to work, go to go every morning, wake up every morning, you know that you, you have enough money, your bank account, you, you got a car, you got a house. Now it's time just to put up to work as best as you can do. And finally, uh, one thing that we don't know about Alex Kovalev. I don't know. <laughs> I think, I think you, you know, I've been too honest with everybody. So in a lot of interviews and I, uh, I never hide anything. I mean, I always share things uh, about me and, and hopefully people will pick up and, and do the same thing and then live life uh, the same way. Because as I mentioned before, we only live once and we have to leave as maximum, you know, uh, experience, the, whatever, just be as crazy you can be, you know, whatever, whatever comes to your mind. If it's going to be flying a plane, jump and parachute, go to be an astronaut or whatever it is, you know, be crazy, be experience everything in your life because that's the way you have to live your life. You know what, Alex, to uh, finish that uh, conversation, I have to say, you know what, in my 18 years pro, you're in my top five talented player that I play with. Thank and you, you know what? You yeah, were an awesome hockey player. When you were in your game, you were the best in the game. Thank you. That's that the only thing I can say. You're so talented. I saw you so many times in practice with your hands. You, you, you should see me now. Sorry? <laughs> you should see me now practices. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you're still good. I'm sure you're still good. You know what? Yeah. You can... You can lost those ends. That's that's yours. Oh. But you know what? Yeah. You 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 did amazing. That was a privilege to play with you, and thank you very much uh, for uh, your time today. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Thank you, guys. This program is brought to you by Scotia Advice Plus. A simple conversation today can help you reach your goals tomorrow. Only from Scotia Bank.